Welcome to the fifth episode of the how to make a VR game in Unity 6.2 course. In the previous video, we learned how to grab objects using the direct interactor with different grab modes and even two hand interactions. Now, we're going to take things one step further and explore advanced interaction in this video. You will learn how to use the socket interactor to make objects snap perfectly into place and how to restrict movement of grabbable objects to create doors and drawers. If you'd like to support my work and get access to exclusive content like the VR shooter project that we made in one hour, join us on Patreon, the link is in the description. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here we are where we were left at the end of last episode and let's get started with our advanced interaction. And the first one that I want to show you is the socket interactor. So let's get started with its setup. I'm going to select here the table and simply press on Ctrl D to duplicate it. Then I'm going to move this new table to the side, rotate it 19 degrees like this by pressing on the E key and just like this, put it over there on the side. Now it looks good. And now it is ready to have a socket interactor, but what is actually a socket interactor? Basically, if we go under the VR player, camera offset, right hand, you can see here that we have the right direct interactor, which allow us to grab object that we used in the previous episode. And the socket interactor is basically doing the same thing, but it doesn't require the right end of the player. It's basically a place where you can drop some grabbable object and the socket interactor will grab them for you. This is especially very important if you are making an inventory or that you want to help the player to snap an object to a certain place. So to set up the socket interactor, let's right click, create empty, call it socket interactor, beautiful. I'm going to click on add component and add a Nixar socket interactor. Beautiful. And finally, we need also a sphere collider. Now, don't forget to set the sphere collider to East trigger. And we can also change the radius depending on the zone we want to use to snap the object. Just for testing, let's set it to a value of 0.4. There you go. Now, right now we have a collider, but this zone is not very visible. So what we can do is right click on the socket interactor, go to 3D object and then sphere. Now we can scale down the sphere to a value of 0.8 on all axes. And because here the sphere collider has a radius of 0.4, setting the sphere size to 0.8 will make the sphere has the same size as its parent collider. Now we can remove the sphere collider on the sphere because we don't need it as we have already one on the parent and here I want to change the material of the sphere to something transparent. So for this I'm going to click on the asset folder, right click here, create, then go to material. We can rename this one socket transparent. And I'm going to change the shader to Universal Render Pipeline Unlit. Then we can drag this material over there on our sphere and change the surface type to transparent. And now I'm going to simply change the alpha value and lower it a little bit. And finally, we can also set the render face from front to both so that it renders on both sides. And as you guys can see, now by moving the parent, we have now created a certain zone where we will be able to place some object. So let me show you how this works by clicking on play. Okay, and as you guys can see, when we approach a grabbable object to the socket interactor, we can see a preview of the object inside. And when we release it, it snaps directly to the center position. So it works pretty great and it works for any kind of object, the cube or even maybe here, this gun. Now let's leave play mode to see how we can actually customize this component. Okay, so back into this component, as you can see, we have a bunch of settings that we can set on the XR socket interactor component. The first important one is the attach transform. And as we saw in the previous episode for this pistol over there, this attach transform can change and offset the rotation and position of this object. Now, in my case, I will leave it like this, but don't hesitate to use this value to change the target position and rotation. Then down below, we have the show interactable overmesh. You guys saw that when I approach the object, it was able to show us a preview of the object inside with its target position and rotation. And there you can actually change the overmesh material. There you go. Now down below, you can also change the scale of the object when it's grabbed by the socket interactor, which is actually very useful for an inventory system. 
And down below, I have also a recycle delay time, which will give me a time threshold to accept back another object after the snapping happens. In my case, I think that the value of one is a bit too much, so I'm going to set it to 0.1. And finally, the last thing that I want to show you is above. It is the starting selected interactable. And this is very, very useful because this allows us to grab an object before the game even starts. Just to give you an example, let's drag here the weapon one over there. So our pistols. And now if I click on play, as you can see by the default, the pistol snaps directly to this position, which is kind of cool. And this is how you can create kind of a default position for some of the objects if you want to be able to snap them back to a certain place whenever you want. And there you go. This sums up how you can make socket interactor for your project. Very handy features. But now let's move on to another feature, which is the constraint grab movement. Okay, so the constraint grab movement is something that will allow us, you know, to interact with an object, but to restrict its movement to a certain position or rotation. It can be if you are moving some chess pieces on top of a table or that you are using a drawer or even a door. So let's see how we can create this kind of interaction. Now, if we select here the grabable cube dynamic attached to end that we set up last time, you can see that down below we have added this XR general grab transformer component. And on this component, we were able to tweak the two handed movement with the scaling of the object. But there are also some translation constraints that we can add over there that can also restrict the movement to a certain axis. So let me show you how it actually works. I'm going to select the table, scale it a little bit, select the socket interactor and put it to the side right there. And now I'm going to right click, click on 3D object, cube, select this cube, scale it down. There you go. Put it above the table maybe. Let's go to the material, change it to maybe something like the default white color. And finally, let's add a Nixar grab interactable to grab it. Now, of course, by doing so, our cube will be able to be grabbed, but its movement will not be restricted. So let's see how we can actually do so. And for this, I'm going to click on add component and add this type a Nixar general grab transformer. This is the exact component that I just showed you on the two hand object. Now, if we click on this plus button over there and drag the XR general grab transformer, we are able to override the default behavior of the grabbing. And here we can basically tweak the different component. Now, in my case, I think I don't want to do any scaling with this one. So I'm going to disable this one. And on the permitted displacement axis, we can change how we want this cube to move. For example, if we click on Y button, we are only enabling the movement of this cube on the X and Z axis. There you go. Now on the constraint axis displacement mode, we can say if this restriction is happening on the object relative axis or the object relative with locked world up or the world axis. Now in my case, I will simply leave it like this. So let's find out all this works by clicking on play. And there you go, as you can see, the cube is only able to move on the X and Z value. And if I try to move it up, it doesn't work. But right now, this is a bit weird because, you know, the rotation is still tracking. And that's actually something that we can tweak as well. So let me leave play mode. There you go. Now, if we go to the XR grab interactable, down below, we can see that we have a bunch of settings to track the position, track the rotation, track the scale. And I think that in this case, I'm going to just disable the track rotation and even disable the track scale. And now if I click on play again, and there you go, as you can see, it works. Now the object follow or end, but doesn't rotate and doesn't move up. So this is just a kind of a good example to show you how we can restrict some movement when grabbing an object with here directly the XR grab component. But there is so much more that we can do. And I'm going to show you a great example by building a door and a drawer system. And to show you how exactly it works, I'm going to use here this cabinet with texture that I've previously used on another tutorial. You will be able to find this link in the description down below. And now you can simply click over there to download it. Beautiful. Now that it is downloaded, we can simply drag it over there on our project here. And here is what this package contains. We can simply click on import over there. And there you go. If we now go to prefab, we should see this beautiful cabinet prefab. A big thanks to Carissa that gave it to me a while ago. But anyway, now we can simply drag it in our scene just here and we can press on E and rotate it 90 degrees to face it in this direction and maybe move it closer. 
Okay, so as you can see, this 3D model is already set up with some colliders, which is going to be good. And most of all, it has two elements. It has a door right there and also a drawer. But for example, if I were to select the door and add here an XR grab interactable, let's do this. There we go. As you guys can see, I can grab this door, but of course it doesn't really work because this door doesn't revolve into an axis. And this is what I'm going to show you now. To simply show you how this works, I'm going to right click on the XR grub interactable and remove it, but I'm going to keep here this rigid body. And now next to this rigid body, I'm going to click on add component and add a inch joint. Beautiful. As the name suggests, a inch joint is a component that is able to restrict the movement of a physics object like a rigid body around a certain axis. So if we click over there, we should see here this little icon which is showing us where this door is going to revolve. And I think that this axis is good as well. As you can see, we can change here the, this value if you wanted on the Y or Z axis, or we could even change here the axis value directly. But I think that these values are perfect. Now, the only thing that we can change is go down below. And here I'm going to click on use limits. This change the gizmo and will allow us to create some limits for the door and I think a value like this would be perfect. Even more to make it so that this door is going back to its default position, we can click here on use spring, set for the spring value a value of maybe 0 0.3 and a damper of 1. Beautiful, now everything is done and if I click on play, as you guys can see, if I try to move this door, it only moves around the inch axis, which is what we want, but that's not it because what we want is also to be able to grab this door. Okay, so now that we've added an inch joint to for the rotation on only one axis on this rigid body, what I want to do is actually grab this door handle and make it so that when I grab it, it is attached to its door parent and will make the door move with itself. So to do this, let's select the door handle, let's add a rigid body and let's add this time a fixed joint. Now, as the name suggests, a fixed joint will fix this rigid body to another. So in our case, we want to simply connect to the body of the door. So let's drag the door rigid body over there and now everything should be good. And of course, what we want is to be able to grab this door handle. So let's simply click on add component and add a Nixar grab interactable. But I can see that there is a little issue with here the retain transform parent, which doesn't lie that this object is children of another and doesn't has a uniform scale. So to fix this, I'm going to simply disable here the retain transform parent. Beautiful. And now let's click on play to find out if this works. And as you guys can see, it doesn't work, unfortunately. And this is because of a very important thing on the XR Grab Interactive Roll. Because if we go to the movement type, you can see that the movement type is set to instantaneous. This means that it is not using the physics of Unity to move the object, it's using its transform position. And so if we change it to velocity tracking, we should be able to keep the physics of the object while grabbing it, which means that we should be able to keep the fixed joint properties and also the inch joint properties when we move the door handle and everything should work now. So let's click on play to find out. And as you guys can see, it works. And most of all, it works very, very well. So all of the physics are still happening even when we grab the object thanks to the velocity track. As you can see, if I grab another velocity track object like this cube that we made in the previous episode, we can actually use it as well to open the door. It works pretty well. And I think that it's also show you how you can create easily a door system in your game simply with the physics properties. And now the last thing that I want to show you is of course to repeat the same thing, but this time for here, this drawer instead. And you guys will see it's going to be very, very good. So the first thing we need is of course to make it so that the movement of this object is restricted to a certain axis. To do this, I'm going to again add a rigid body, but this time it's not an inch joint that we will need. It is a configurable joint. And this component is very, very long, but don't worry, we are not going to use all of its properties. The thing we need is of course to change the X, Y, Z and angular motion restriction. So in our case, we want to simply move the object on the blue axis, which is the Z one. So let's simply set the X motion to locked, Y motion to locked, Z motion to limited, and locked for all of the rotation. 
So in this case, we are only able to move on the Z axis, which is this one. But we can set the limit of the movement over there on the linear limit. In my case, I'm going to set it to 0.15 like this. There we go. Now it is the same thing as before. We can go down below. And now compared to the door, I don't need to mess with the handle. So I can simply select the drawer and simply add a Nixar Grab Interactable right there. So don't forget here to set the movement type to Velocity Tracking. In this case, we can even go down below and disable the track rotation as well as the track scale. And let's click on play to find out how this works. And there you go guys, you know how to use socket to snap object in place and how to add movement limits to create realistic doors and drawers in VR. In the next episode, we'll go even further with UI interaction that feature Poke and Ray Interactor. Don't forget to check out the Patreon exclusive VR shooter tutorial, it's available right now along with the source code of this series. Thank you for watching till the end and as always, see you soon, bye bye!